Sonny Rollins is one of our most beloved, inspiring, creative artists. For six decades, more than half a century, he has played music with the majesty of a Greek god. His tenor saxophone, the vehicle with which he manifests improvisational journeys of unprecedented harmonic imagination. Sonny Rollins displays an encyclopedic knowledge of the classic American songbook. The songs he heard as a child on the radio and at the movies are still an important part of his musical life. I spent my youth going to the movies on Saturday and listening to the radio every day. You had the newsreel. Pathé News, you know, then you had a cartoon. <laughs> then you had the uh, serial, The Secrets of Treasure Island. Uh, there was one about uh, Fu Manchu. There was some cowboy ones also, you know. But anyway, then you'd have maybe like a Three Stooges. Then the, the main feature came on. Action in the Atlantic with Humphrey Bogart or uh, Christmas in Connecticut with Dennis Morgan. In the late 30s, many Harlem theaters doubled as performance venues, including the Renaissance. The Renaissance was a movie theater which was on 7th Avenue between 136th and 137th Street, connected to the Renaissance Ballroom. The Renaissance Ballroom was one of these ballrooms in which a lot of the bands would play. Al Sears had a band there, uh, great tenor saxophonist, played with a lot, a lot of people, Duke Ellington among them. I got a lot of uh, my early affinity to a lot of these show songs and everything from the movies. Uh, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers you know, and, and Jerome Kern, the great uh, composer. So I, I got an early introduction to a lot of this music. As a really young guy, I liked uh, the Lone Ranger and the Green Hornet, you know. And uh, I used to listen to uh, uh, Amateur Night uh, from Harlem, the Apollo Theater. All the way through with Johnny Dollar. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. I remember one time I was playing with Max and Clifford, and we got into Cleveland, you know, traveling by car, you know, I think it was probably five guys in a car with instruments. So we got into Cleveland late one day, and we were tired, and we, so we went to, uh, I was a guy that had to go to the, was de designated to go to the hotels and check everybody in, I guess, because I don't know why, but I was always a guy that was not reticent about doing anything, you know. I mean, I was from New York, so. Anyway, I went there and said, so you, you, we could have been turned down, but the guy accepted us. I remember it was the Armstead Hotel. And uh, anyway, I remember quite well. We checked in and got all oh, got nice rooms. I got a delicious uh, steak that night. I remember that's when I was eating steak, meat, you know, back in those days. But anyway, on the radio, when we checked in, was ba 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 Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. I listen to quite a bit of radio. It was on the radio that Sonny heard Serenade, which appears on Sonny's first recording for Doxy Records, Sonny Please. Serenade was a melody which introduced 
some kind of radio show, you know, which was on. And um, I always remember that melody, and I sort of liked it. I said, gee, I'd like to uh, play jazz on that melody, extemporize on it, you know. So uh, I brought it out of uh, 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 retirement, so to speak, and uh, played it a couple of times some years ago. And then uh, uh, recently I started playing it again. Sonny Please includes another favorite from Sonny's Radio Days, Someday I'll Find You. There was a show on called uh, Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. And Mr. Keen and his uh, sidekick, you know, they would go out and Oh, uh, Miss, Mr. Keene, uh, I'm calling up because uh, my wife Joan left town to see a sister and we haven't heard anything from her for two weeks. So the kindly old tracer, as he was referred to, would then endeavor to track her down and find out all the reasons and where she was at. So, um, uh, it, it, it was it, it was it was an interesting show. It wasn't uh, the stories weren't completely as sophisticated as some other shows, but it was definitely of that period. And it was on every night. Then it was on uh, for 15 minutes. Then it was on for a half hour, uh, and so on. So it's so it was a, it was a quite popular show. Uh, Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. And uh, that same song, Someday I'll Find You. Of course, that was quite obvious theme song. But um, that's where I heard that song at, in other words. But it, again, I like that melody. And uh, I had an opportunity uh, once I got my own band to uh, play all of these songs uh, from, from my uh, memory. And so I ended up uh, uh, bringing this song out, you know, Someday I'll Find You. I get a reputation of playing unusual material, but that's where it all comes from. It's, I, you know, I say, wow, myself, which is good. I surprise myself because it's not planned. With literally thousands of songs at his fingertips, Sonny's improvisations and repertoire always include the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. 